Right. This is a documentary of how to put up lights. Is it filming right now? Featuring <laughs> Cody Weber putting up lights. Is there a light? Yeah, it's blinking. It's blinking? There's a red one. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, it's been. This is a, a tutorial on how to put up lights. It's not in any way relevant to the Q&A, but Cody wants you to see it anyways. I think it will be nice to roll. Oh, that's going in. God damn. That sneeze is going in. Oh, that Who's that something in this fucking place? It's my dogs. Maybe you're allergic to your own bullshit. What are your travel photo shoot fees? It depends on what you want to do and how long I'm going to be there for. Uh, obviously my travel would have to be covered, which means, you know, either buy me a plane ticket or gas my car up. I'm not opposed to driving places. Um, that's fine with me. Uh, but it really just depends. It can go anywhere from four to five hundred dollars to four to five thousand dollars, just depending on what you want. I've traveled as far as Seattle to do music videos. Uh, I lived down south for a while in New Orleans. Um, basically, I'll, I'll go wherever if it's paid for. Like, I'm not looking to get rich, uh, which might be my problem because then I find myself broke. Um, I just like doing this stuff, so having the opportunity to get out of this little area and experience other parts of the world is, is worth it, especially if my travel is paid for. Um, so, I mean, hit me up, send me a message, uh, send me an email, a Facebook message, something, and we'll figure it out. Jay Weber asks, Jake, what is your dream country to visit? This is private. Can you guys please leave? Thank you. I don't really have a dream country to visit. I mean, I don't really care, but I, mean, I don't see any reason to not I mean to leave. I mean... It's not that I really want to go to nowhere I really want to go to. I don't really see the reason. Jay Weber asks, Cody, favorite nonfiction book? Honestly, this is going to sound really weird, but it's probably The Dirt by Motley Crue. Like that book, I was probably your age, Jake, when I read that book, and I it changed me from wanting to be like an innocent little kid to I wanted to be like a degenerate because they made it seem so fucking fun. So probably The Dirt by Motley Crue, just in terms of significance. Shibby asks, Rebecca, what's your go-to snack food? Salt and vinegar chips or healthy snack is the good bean chickpeas Thai coconut lemongrass. They are the best things in the entire fucking world. I took them with me on my trip to Ecuador and I saved, like, I was so, what's the word I'm looking for? Stingy Cautious. about, like, eating them. Like, I would only eat a couple at a time because I wanted them to last the whole week because they're so freaking good. As far as, like, going somewhere for a snack or junk food, McDonald's 10 piece McNugget and fry meal. That's not a snack. Always. Trust me, to her, it's a snack. To me, it's a snack. If I'm drunk, that's what I'm getting. You know what? I've never been drunk. If I'm sober, that's what I'm getting. This one, that one, that one. Yeah, this one. Close. I used to trap at the subway. Where is your favorite location to shoot photos? Where do you least like to shoot photos? Uh, favorite location, the mountains. I fucking love shooting in the mountains. I don't know what it is about them. It's just so magical and whimsical and pretty and it might be because I live in one of the flattest parts of the country there's no hills where I live so the mountains are just even more majestic than they would be otherwise but I fucking love shooting in the mountains and my least favorite places to shoot are cornfields believe it or not <laughs> they never turn out good they're always creepy they never work and corn is just boring to look at it's not visually interesting at all well, every, every time, just fucking stay on. Why does the light even have an automatic shut off? Like if I want the light off, I'll turn the thing off. It's fucking three feet big. I'll see it on. <sighs> anyway, I hate doing fields of any kind unless it's been recently plowed. Then it's fine. Um, I also like shooting on beaches. Um, 
and I love shooting in like indoor vicinities that have really really high ceilings because then lighting is just infinite you can do anything they think they're slick like they're listening to me on the other side of this wall but I can hear the gate open when they do it so jokes on them anyway that's the end Rebecca what are your favorite books slash authors um, I'm really not a fan of reading whatsoever I used to really love it when I was a kid when I was a kid I was obsessed with Junie B. Jones um, but then once I got to like middle school age I really just hated reading and I cheated on all my all of my like accelerated reader tests in high school I would just like take all the tests that were based on movies like I'm a hundred percent a movies person I love movies I just can't really get into reading books like they just don't it's not like enough stimulation like I'm a very visual person I would rather see something depicted in front of my face and rather than having to like you know imagine it in my head it's just like it's more I don't know I just like I like watching it more but I do remember in high school one of like one thing that I really did enjoy reading was Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman I really liked those poems um, I like I love poetry as a whole but like that in particular is one thing that I had to read in high school that I really liked um, I also loved the book uh, The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls, which I had to read for uh, my developmental psychology class my freshman year of college, and I love that book. If you haven't read it, you should, because it's great. Um, and I also loved the book The Last Lecture by Randy Posh, who was a professor at Carnegie Mellon who died of pancreatic cancer, but basically he wrote about his life up until that point. <laughs> Those are... Yeah, those are the three books that I can really recall, like, actually enjoying, and I never really picked them up because I was interested. I kind of did it out of obligation, but they were ones that I, I read that I actually really liked. As far as, like, classics go, the only one I was really interested in was The Great Gatsby, but again, I would rather, you know, watch the movie form of that than read the book, so, yeah. Evie Bell asks, Cody, I didn't even know you made music. What other secrets are hidden from relatively new viewers like myself? Still all about it. Take an hour. He's two racist. Hours, three that's hours, one thing. Four hours. Racist. Yeah, that's why I like you, Brownie. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Trying something new. Uh, I do a lot of different stuff. Um, I started writing when I was real little. Uh, my both of my grandmothers wrote poetry. Um, and I've been writing as long as I could read. Um, that was the first artistic endeavor I ever got into, and I think it's the most pure of all the art forms that I do, just in that if I don't do it for a long period of time, I feel like super guilty about it. Uh, and I'd say for every f 10 pieces I write, one of them is worth the shit. But getting through those other nine is always worth it when you get to that one where you're like, this one's good. Uh, then I got into music when my parents got divorced. My dad hit his midlife crisis with a vengeance and bought like, I'm not even shitting you, like eight drum sets. Like our whole house was full of drum sets. I got really into drums and that was my main thing. And it's weird to me now because most people don't know me as a musician now. I'm either known as the photographer or the guy that makes videos. I'm not really known for music anymore, especially drumming. <laughs> But I used to be a pretty decent drummer at one time. Now I'm just okay. But I used to be pretty good. Uh, I got into videos next, um, and photography kind of came as a result of that. And I realized I liked framing shots and stuff like that way more than I enjoyed being in front of a camera, which was surprising to me because I'm arrogant, or I used to be. Um, so those are the big ones. Writing, music, videography, photography. In terms of importance, uh, I would say photography is the most important just because it's what I make my livelihood on and it's probably what I'm best at, uh, but writing means the most to me. Uh, if I had to give up everything I've, I've developed except one thing, I think I would keep the writing um, just because I would feel guilty for the rest of my life not being able to put pen to paper. James Lynch asks, how would you feel about doing background vocals on the new Ren record? So how, how do you feel about doing background vocals? Um, well, 
I did do some vocals in one song that Cody's already finished for the new Ren record. But it's not really like uh, singing vocals, it's just like me making noises, kind of, and he just like throws them in there. Oh, a bunch of sexual noises. But yeah, I think he's gonna... Here, I'll just I'll put this in for him so he could use it. Uh, Cody is going to sample a part of that song right here. Put it right here, Cody. Right here, right now, right now. Right now! Let's, let's take a listen. Let's just wait a second. <laughs> That's a good song. That's not good. That's a good song. That was disturbing <laughs> but we're also thinking about doing covers with his brother dakota we were in the process of working out a cover to charlie puth's new song attention where i did all of the vocals and dakota learned the bass riff and cody played guitar but we haven't worked on that for a while but yeah no i'm not opposed to doing vocals on the record at all that's pretty neat and in fact i plan on it all right. Hey, Cody. Can Done. Cody, can you do me a favor right now? Put more of that clip in and put, like, um, you know, like, that old, like, 2000 you're crushing, meme. You're crushing my life. Get up there. <laughs> Cody, put, the, put, put your song in with that dancing lamb right now or whatever, the dancing llama. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We good? Answer. Should we go edit what we have so far? Should we? What else are we gonna do? What time is it? I have a shoot at six. Four eleven, so we could go work on it for an hour or so. KT McVeigh asks, Jake, what do you hate so much about frogs? Are there any animals you really like? No, there's I don't it's not it's just the frogs just say I don't want them on me. And yeah, I like that. I mean animals are cool. I don't see why you would like animals. Kind of, I, don't like, I don't want animals on me. That was my answer. Katie asks, Cody, are you open to doing more collabs with people you haven't met? Like, have... Fuck. Are you open to doing more collabs with people you haven't met, like you have with Ian Astronaut? Jake, will you go get my cigarettes, please? Yep. Thank you, brother. Sitting on my desk. Here you go, brother. Thanks. This is an ad for Parliament Cigarettes. Smoke them. Thank you, Parliament Cigarettes, for sponsoring Thank this video. You. Thank you for sponsoring my brother's lungs with badness. Shut the door! No. I will. Thanks. I mean, yeah, I'm open to it. Uh, believe it or not, I don't get asked to collaborate very often. Um, usually the only kind of collaborations I do and this isn't by choice, but it's people that pay me to do something. Like, I've done album covers a lot for people. Like, there's a lot of bands that I've done album covers for. Um, one of my proudest uh, collaborations was one I did with uh, one of my favorite musicians of all time, uh, a guy named Jack Conti. One of his album covers is a photo I took way back in 2008, I think. And also, later on, that following year, he also provided vocals on a song called A Girl Who Misses Much. And it's, it's a bummer for me, because I, I think he killed it, but I did not know what the hell I was doing back then, as far as like production goes. So the only thing that really sounds good on that track are his vocals. My eyes turned Um, I wish I could have got him to collaborate with me on Nostalgia or Burning at Both Ends, but he's an insanely busy and successful dude now, so, um, it never, it never happened. Uh, if for whatever reason you happen to be watching this though, Jack, um, please make more music because I miss the shit out of it and I need more of it in my life. But yeah, so, I, I really enjoy working with people, uh, especially collaborating on music because it's really fun to just start with a bass track, like a guitar riff, you send it over to somebody and they transform it into something new, and then they give it back to you and you try to add on top of their transformation, and then suddenly you have a song like uh, the latest Joy song, uh, Synonyms. So I'm dancing through the nightly rain Though I know it will not 
to the pain. Which the end result of that was 110% different than the way I wrote the guitar riff. Oh, door. And I love when that happens. It's the best feeling in the world when you finish something and it's completely different than the way you intended, but it's better. And that's how that song turned out. Also, Ike, if you happen to be watching this, let's make some more stuff, man. I, I want to make stuff with everybody. Like, collaborating is the most fun shit in the world. It's, the, it's like, it's the one way that I feel the most attached to the human race is when I'm working with somebody. I don't feel connected generally if I'm just talking to someone or if I meet someone randomly on the street or at a bar or something. Like there's a certain disconnect that happens that completely evaporates when you're working with somebody on a creative level. J.U. asks, have you watched any of Cody? I already answered a question like this. I answered that I like. I'm just going Harold down. I'm just going down the well, list. I didn't know the. Qu I didn't know the question before I looked at the comment. Thought criminal says Rebecca, did Hitler do anything wrong? Also, if you had to choose between either Hitler or Stalin being reincarnated and becoming president of the United States, who would you pick? I would say, yeah, Hitler definitely did shit wrong. Um, wait, oh my gosh. Are the, ca are the kittens out? Is that what you're pointing to? I feel like I can't answer that question without feeling like an awful person. But yeah, Hitler definitely did something wrong. If I had to pick between those two for president... I can't answer this question! Because no matter what my answer is, like, it's so fucked up and wrong. Here we go. Well, pick? I was basically like... Stalin killed more people. So if you're just going on a numbers game... No, I wasn't going on a numbers game. It's just like if I say that, like, I feel like picking either just makes me a terrible person. So who would you pick? I guess I'd pick Hitler. Just because like before he started doing all that fucked up shit, he was like supposedly really likable and like charismatic. So like I'll take those qualities of him minus him using them to persuade tons of people to commit mass genocide. Just, just say That's my answer, I answered it. Just put Dad. Hitler on that. Don't put that in there. <laughs> Too late, I did it. I got one. Gator Boy Mike asks, if you could change one thing about American popular culture, what no, would it be? For, that's a question for you. It's for all of us. Is it? Yes. Well, show me. Just answer the fucking No, thing. it's fucking directed at you. I read that question. <laughs> You're such a goddamn liar. How dumb do you think I am? That question's not for me. Just answer it. No, it's for you. I'll answer that question's too. for you. It's not for all of us. Pick one directed at me. Okay, well answer the one about... You can't just pick questions that you want to know the answer to when they're not directed at me. Sure I can. This is my video. I can well, do whatever what? I want. guess what? I'm not answering it because it's not for me. Answer the one about... Uh, what's your opinion of my old videos? Because you never said that. Your, like the rants? Mm -hmm. Like any, uh, any of my old stuff. Alright, get out. Fucking morons. Um, I think the one video that really strikes me that I remember seeing a long time ago that I loved was his video called 7.54 in the morning. And it was basically just like a portfolio of like a bunch of pictures he had taken that in, and some video that he just like cut all together. I don't even know if he still has it because it's no longer on his channel and it's not on the Cody Weber fan channel either. But me and my stepsister, Austin, loved, loved that video, mostly because of the song that was in it, that at the time, like, I didn't know, you know, I thought it was, like, you know, someone else's song that he used, but I found out that he actually made that song, and I loved it. So, yeah, I loved 7.54 in the morning. Um... My stepsister Austin loved his song, A Philistine on the Sidewalk. Which back then, 
at that age I didn't really appreciate it but now listening back to it since I've been here I love that song too and I think it's beautiful um, as far as the rants go it would depend on what rant because there were some rants that I that I really liked but again like I liked them when I was like 14 years old so I don't really know if my opinion on them would be any different now than it was back then because you know I've that was so long ago um, and I was really stupid I was a stupid 14 year old so things that I might have found funny or interesting or perceived as smart back then I might watch now and like cringe real hard at but I remember one rant in particular I don't really know if I if I enjoyed it but it was just like super interesting to me and I really don't even remember anything that's said in it and it's not on his channel anymore it's not on the Cody Weber fan channel but there was a rant that he made called cartoons and couches and for some reason like I couldn't tell you anything that was said in that video but for some reason that one in particular sticks out in my mind and I remember watching that one a lot so yeah and then there were other rants where like <laughs> There were other rants I watched of his where I thought he was just like an asshole or he was like arrogant or was at least acting that way or acting like he fucking knew everything, which he's still like that sometimes. But but yeah, my favorites were 7.54 in the morning, a uh, Philistine on the sidewalk, and cartoons and couches. Yeah. Steven asks, Jake, what are Cody's best and worst qualities? See you in 45 minutes. Yeah, because we talk about how great I am. No, about how pretty you are. His best quality is probably, I mean, he's good with kids, and he's got what he does, photography and stuff. His worst quality is probably, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. He complains a lot sometimes. My answer. Uh, Cody, what are the chances Jake picks up photography? Jake is really sensitive. He, it's weird because he's much more sensitive than I am. Yeah, right. You haven't seen it. Trust you me, he is. So Even sensitive. Jake will admit it. You're softer than me. He's softer. He yeah, just but, is. But but your family doesn't see how sensitive you are. You like only I see that shit. Like I, I feel like. Okay, you, this is my question. I'm just saying, like you're just as sensitive as. No, doesn't matter. The point, it, then that further like proves the point of like why it is confounding to me that I don't think he picks up photography or you know art in that in that way because generally sensitive people kind of gravitate toward art. Jake, at least at 13 years old, Jake gravitates more toward uh, comedy. Kill yourself. Which is fine, but it's like the opposite side of the spectrum. For me, I want to make stuff that's pretty or, you know, sometimes bleak, sometimes not. I just like documenting stuff. I have a, I have a real obsession with my own memories that Jake does not seem to have as well. Jake is more just, he's really into like the Conan O'Brien style of humor. Like he really likes self-deprecating humor. Um, but that's a fine line because self-deprecation can quickly turn into like real depression if you start to think about it too hard. You know what I mean? Like if you start to think, like I'm making all these jokes at my own expense, but maybe there's like a nugget of truth there. And then that nugget grows and grows well, and grows. Now it's, now it's gonna be like that for him. He just planted the seed in his head. He was gonna plant the seed himself. No, he wasn't. You don't understand. What do you mean I don't understand? You're gonna give him a, like a, like a it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If it was self-fulfilling, he would have won, he would have been he the one to have say it. it that negative. Will you go inside? Because you're really throwing off my fucking balance here. You're throwing off your own balance. Go ahead. So anyway, I think Jake will gravitate more. Like what I hope happens is I hope Jake turns 16, 17 years old and decides I want to get into stand-up. Because I think he could be really good at it if he really honed his skills in. He has a natural cadence and I don't notice it in real life. But when I film him during the day, there's so many like really funny moments that just go over my head until I look back on the footage. Your answers are so short. Yep. Just like your winner. Hey. 
Just like your winner. I have a medium winner. It's Hosty Ghost. I'm like, damn, this kid's funny. Like he's like he's he's really funny. So I think that if Jake gets into stand up, that'll be his niche. I don't think it's gonna be photography, writing, you know, the more sensitive bullshit that I do. Uh, I think he will he will end up being a comic that people laugh at if if you know if I had it my way I would have him studying Bill Hicks George Carlin you know the greats um, but it, you know it's really up to him like he like when I think about myself at 13 there is a stark contrast between 13 year old Cody and 28 year old Cody so things could change dramatically like he's still like just about to really hit the throes of puberty and I'm interested to see how that alters his chemistry because it will for sure it does to everybody like we all like between the ages of 13 and 16 is when you go from like little kid to who you're going to be um, and I'm curious to see what direction he moves in look at the flower to me the flower me the flower why do I feel like I'm stepping in shit Probably are. Dinosaur poop. Alright. Can you see it? Yep. Alright, I need to know from you. <gasps> is this. What is this bug called? I call them potato bugs. Cody. T oh, shit. Cody tells me that they're not potato bugs, but. They're roly poly. They're potato bugs to me. So comment whether this is a roly poly, a potato bug, or if you call it something different. Does that happen? No, I want to know. Yeah, that happens. Does to that me too. happen to like any of you? Yes, it's like, a very common thing. When you walk outside and it, it goes from dark to bright, and then you instantly have to sneeze. Yeah, that's yeah. a thing. That's yeah. a very common. Okay. Thing. Sure, because people ways. at home are like, why? Look. Why does that happen? I was like, I don't know. Well, people where you live are fucking weird. They're right. They are. They're the weirdest people. Like the East Coast people are the weirdest in comment the whole country. Comment in the comment section below who's weirder, East Coasters or Midwesterners. Definitely fucking East Coasters. You people are shut off as shit. Yeah, yeah. Samantha asks Rebecca, what was one of your best memories as a kid? That's not how it's worded. That is literally the exact wording. What was one of your best memories as a kid? Oh. <laughs> Um, I think my childhood as a whole was just incredible. Like, I feel like I was super lucky. Like, I had one of the best childhoods that any kid could have possibly had. Um, just because, oh wait, Suzanne's here, hold on, shit. 